You can be turning to uh, Revelation chapter 8 today. Amen. For the sake of you that uh, have not read your Bible this week, we're going to read this whole chapter. But... You're in, you're in luck. It's only 13 verses. So, uh, I guess we could turn over and read uh, Psalms 119. Uh, get everybody excited and thrilled. <clears throat> but, uh, better not probably. Uh, Revelation chapter 8, and we want to start reading at verse 1. And, uh, I want to tell you, difficult times are coming. You think this world is in a bad shape now. You wait till after the Lord comes. And uh, I uh, I hear a lot of preachers, and I'm just going to say this right before we read our our, uh, chapter this morning. I hear a lot of preachers talk about tribulation being divided into uh, the first half and the last half, three and a half of each, three and a half years of each. But I want to tell you, one fellow said the first three and a half years is the lesser tribulation. The last three and a half is the greater. But the Bible does not divide it in that sense. It's all tribulation. And when we get through this chapter this morning, this first, uh, uh, being in verse 1 of chapter 8, takes place in the first three and a half years of uh, tribulation period. And I want you to look in these verses of scripture this morning and see if, see if you think it's not a very bad part of the tribulation period. Alright? And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much much incense, that he should offer it with, with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which is before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hands. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire, of the altar, and cast it into the earth. And there were voices, and thunderings, and lightnings, and earthquake. And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth. The third part of trees were burnt up. And all green grass was burned up. The second angel sounded as it were a great mountain, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. And the third part of the sea became blood. The third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. The third angel sounded. And there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded. And the third part of the sun was smitten, the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, 
which are yet to sound. Amen. And we're not going to go into, we may have reference to some things in chapter 9, but that's as far as we're going to read uh, this morning. But I want us to pay special attention to verse 13. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason. They are the voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. Amen. You may be seated. If you, you read this uh, eighth and ninth chapters, and then just if you were to jump over to chapter 16 and uh, read about the vials that's going to be poured out, a lot of these uh, terrible judgments uh, already happened in Egypt back in the book of Exodus. And uh, you could turn over there and read it, but you don't want to right now. Amen. Uh, but I want to tell you, this this world that we know as earth, amen, it's, uh, it's destined for God's judgment. I've said several times before, and I trust that the Lord will help me this morning with this uh, thought. I've said several times before that America has probably the greatest military might of any nation on earth. And we have the capability and the ability and the know-how and the technology to defend ourselves from any other force of the world. That would do America harm. We have that capability. I mean, we've got satellites in the heavens. We've got, uh, we've got technology that is beyond comprehension. When I was a boy, uh, just running around on the farm without shoes on, we never ever dreamed of having the technology that we have now. And it's almost to the point that whatever comes out today in the newest fad or newest technology, next week's going to be obsolete. There'll be something taking its place. Never ever dreamed when I was a boy that I'd be toting around a cell phone on my belt and could call anywhere in the world. from Just without a cord, uh, without anything. That's technology. But I tell you, Technology has become so vast now that you can't hardly keep up with it. But I said all that to say this. Though we have the technology, the military might, the ability, the men power to, to protect ourselves from any other enemy, who is going to protect us from the God's judgments and the wrath of God? Amen. All the technology that we have devised as a nation will never be able to stop the judgments of God. I think that is pretty well evident, amen, from the storms that we have encountered in the last several years that has wrecked uh, destruction on the coast as well as in the Midwest and the tornadoes that is worse than they've ever been. And uh, the tsunamis that has uh, come upon this world, amen, who is going to protect us from the wrath and the judgments of God? God is not going to let, especially America, slide, amen, through history, amen, without being judged or punished because we have murdered over 55 million babies that have been aborted. Amen. And God's not going to let that pass by. And we, uh, we are, we are living in a generation now, uh, we, we wonder what's going to happen tomorrow. Our, 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 our legislators, amen, are saying that, uh, are y'all still with me? Amen. That same sex marriage is legal. And acceptable in our society when God's word is against it. Amen. We are a destined people for God's judgment. We are ripe. Amen. For disaster. Not only in America, but this entire world. 
I was reading the other day, the present day, uh, scientists describe earth and, uh, and, and I thought this was amusing in a, in a sense of the word. They describe er, uh, earth as a spaceship in the midst of our entire universe. Amen. And probably this planet Tiny, small in comparison to the other planets out there in the universe. But yet, as uh, small as, uh, as this earth is in comparison to the other planets and constellations of the heavens, amen, earth has enjoyed a lot of privileges that no other, amen, globe or planet in the world, amen, or, or should I say in the universe, has ever enjoyed. Amen. No, no other that planet that we are aware of, amen, has had the privilege of having life on it. Amen. Water on it. Amen. Sustain life. Not just creeping creatures. But we, amen, have enjoyed trees, amen, that God created. We've enjoyed visitation. That God made for us in the beginning. The Bible tells us, y'all still with me, amen, that in the Garden of Eden, God planted a garden in the east of God, of Eden, amen, for man to enjoy the benefits of. So all the visitation that you eat every day is a result of God's privilege and blessings upon this world. Amen. And yet, as much as we have enjoyed, amen, and, and even though Adam fell and transgressed and Eve, amen, and the whole creation, amen, uh, reverted back to this world of sin because of Adam and Eve's transgression, yet God was merciful enough Amen. To uh, make a plan and devise a plan or, 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 or privilege us. Amen. That we can be reclaimed and saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. No other planet in God's eternal universe, amen, has ever had the privileges that this world has had. And yet, amen, this earth is so defiled. Amen. And filled with uh, moral rebellion. Amen. It's a matter of record. We don't have to go back and search the pages of history. All of us here know, amen, how rebellious man has become. Amen. That he hates God. He hates anything that is Christian. Anything that is related to heaven. Come on, are you all still with me? Amen. I read this book of Revelation. I want the Lord to help me this morning. Amen. I want to talk to you for a while about judgment upon this earth. Amen. John uses the the best language, most language of his, amen, of his command to describe the planetary judgment. Amen. Do this maverick place that is called earth. Amen. If we, if, if I could get people, amen, in Rappahannock County to understand what judgment is coming upon this earth, amen, nobody in their right mind would want to serve sin and the devil. Amen. I read this verse 1 of chapter 8, and I, I've read I don't know how many commentaries on this one verse. Amen. What does that one half hour of silence mean? Amen. It seems like nobody knows why there is silence in heaven for the space of one half an hour. Amen. If you'd allow me this morning, I'd like to just give you savage commentary. That'd be all right. Amen. I think that the divine terror, amen, which is going to scour this plant in such awful proportions, amen, that it takes away the breath of those that are in heaven and they look down and see what is going to transpire on this globe, amen, that it creates such an awe, amen, as those that are in that eternal world, 
Amen. Sees and realizes what's about to transpire on this place that is called earth. Amen. It takes their breath away. Hit me here. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. I want to tell you. Amen. Jesus Christ still presides on the eternal throne. Nothing has taken God by surprise. Y'all still here now? Say amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus still presides at the right hand of the Father. Amen. He's got a claim against earth because of its rebellion, because of its sin, because of its grossness. Amen. That has come against, amen, everything that's right and true and whole. Amen. So there's a struggle in the heavenly world. Amen. That we've got to come to a decision as to what's going to transpire. In verse 3, he said, And another came and stood at the altar. Amen. Could I say, Amen, this morning, that's where all major great decisions are made, is at the altar. Amen. The angel come and stood at the altar with an incense. Amen. And I want to tell you, Jesus Christ was still presiding then too. Amen. Amen. And and there there at the altar, how ah, where this angel stood, this great decision was made. And then I see, amen, there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. In verse 7, amen, was casting upon the earth. The scalding, withering damage is declared to be by John. Amen, and the third part of these trees were burnt up. And all the green grass was burnt up. Amen, because of this hail and fire. Amen, mingled with blood that is cast upon the earth. Are y'all still with me? I want you to get this. Amen, a third of all the trees are scorched and destroyed. A third of all the vegetation, that means your gardens. That means a brush. That means, are y'all still here? That means your cantaloupe and your watermelon. That means all the vegetation of the grass. Amen, is going to be destroyed. A third of it on the entire earth. Amen, is going to be destroyed. Destroyed. Amen. Peter warned us on the day of Pentecost that such judgment would come. He preached under the direct anointing. Amen. Of the Holy Ghost. And he quoted from, Amen, the prophet Joel. Amen. That in keeping with that great and notable day of the Lord. Acts chapter 2 and verse 20. Amen. And there would be revealed, he said in verse 19 of chapter Chapter 2 of Acts, wonders in heaven above, signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Amen. A third part of the earth is going to be totally scorched. That means that, come on, are y'all still with me? The horses and the cattle will have nothing to eat. Amen. Because a third part of all vegetation has been destroyed. Amen. And I want to say, Amen. I want the Lord to help me. Along with this hail and fire mingled with blood. Amen. Look at the next sounding of the trumpet. Amen. The earth will hardly be able to marshal. Amen. All of our uh, resources. Amen. And rescue efforts. Amen. Before this terrible tragedy of life. Amen. And the Bible said, whoo, in verse 8 and 9, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. And the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea that had life died. Amen. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. Amen. Can I tell you, we've already got hail and fire mingled with blood. Now the sea, a third part of the sea becomes blood. A third part of the fish and creatures in the sea die. And the third part of the sea ships that are in the sea, amen, are totally destroyed, 
been annihilated. Can you imagine if a third part, come on, you all still here? A third part of all the fish in the sea, hey man, die. You know what happens when, hey man, fish die? They float to the top. Hey man, and that means the sharks, that means the whales, that means the dolphins, hey man, any creatures in the sea, hey man, a third of them's gonna die and float and rise to the top of the water. You talking about a stench? You talking about such an awful odor, hey man, that you'll not be able to stand the stench of it? Hey man, great God, and I see people today, hey man, the devils live for the devil, and live for sin, and live for the flesh, then to live for God, hey man, and go to heaven when they die, hey man, you all still with me, they'd rather live in this world, and rebel against God, and go to the tribulation period, hey man, where there'll be hail, hey man, and fire, mingled with blood, and the sea turn to blood, hey man, and a third part of the fish die, and a third part of the ships of the ocean are completely annihilated and destroyed, I want to tell you, hey man, what's my wrong with people's thinking, hey man, don't they understand that this planet earth is destined for judgment of God, hey man, come on to y'all soon, me. Hey man, the health department will not be able to cope with it. Hey man, all the rescue efforts. Hey man, the uh, marshal around the world will never be able to help. Hey man, man in this dilemma because this is God's judgments. Somebody say amen. <laughs> You could turn to the book of Exodus, chapter 7, verses 20 and 21. And the Lord has happened, amen, in, in Egypt, if you will. Amen to a man uh, whose country is called Egypt, and he's a Pharaoh and the king. And the Lord smote the waters that were in the river in the sight of Pharaoh. And all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. And the fish stank, and the Egyptians could not drink the water. Hey man, what is human beings going to do? Hey man, when God's judgment is poured out upon this earth. Hey man, it came in the days of, of, of Pharaoh in Egypt. Hey man, but it's coming again. Somebody said it'll never happen. It will happen. Hey man, God said it would. John saw it happen. Hey man, and we're destined for judgment. Hey man, in this globe. Somebody say amen. God hammered one. Hey man, tyrant apostate into submission. Hey man, and I want to tell you, he's going to tangle with the Antichrist. And the Antichrist organized planet. Amen. And Psalm 78 and verse 44 is prophesied. Amen. And, and the Bible said, and turn their rivers into blood and their floods <coughs> that they could not drink. Amen. In Psalms 105 and verse 29, he turned their waters into blood and slew their fish. Amen. You want to know what global judgment, amen, is going to be like? Amen. I want to tell you, amen, man is destined for God's judgment. Amen. Are y'all still with me? Say amen. The first four trumpet judgments, amen, have to do with literal plagues affecting visit, uh, vegetation and seas and rivers and planets. Amen. As indicated by the angel. The next three trumpets will, amen, uh, will deal with moral creation. Amen. Not the material one, but moral man. I want to tell you, we think that the, the material world being scorched, the trees gone, the grass gone, the gardens gone, vegetation gone, the rivers turned into blood, the 
can turn into blood. You think that's bad? Come on, somebody say amen. There's another angel that sounds, and he says, A great star, amen, from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of waters, and the name of the star is called Wormwood. Amen. It goes on to say that many men died, amen, because of the bitter waters of the Wormwood. Amen. It's a pollution that will make smog and uncontrolled industrial drainage and waste appear minor problems of today. You talk about amen epidemics amen and an epidemic of dysentery typhoid malaria black water fever and infection amen it'll exhaust the best organized effort to, amen of the health department and all the authorities of the world amen every part of the globe amen is going to call for emergencies amen shipments of vaccine amen I guarantee you it's going to make the national news. It's going to make the international news. It's going to come over here. It's going to make Fox News. It's going to make CNN News. It's, are y'all still with me? It's going to make CBS News. It's going to make ABC News. Hey man, hey man, the whole world is going to realize that this earth is in a grip that they don't know what to do with. Hey man, I want to tell you this for me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord. Somebody say amen. I guarantee you sinners are going to have time to think. It's going to be a different world than what they know right now. We've got the laziest generation. Help me here. We got the laziest generation. Amen in this world is ever. I mean, they just lounge. They don't want to work. Come on here. Amen. Ah, but I want to tell you. Amen. When this earth is scorched and polluted. Amen. A stinking ruin and rot is going to challenge their sin. Amen. Judgment is going to be multiplied. Amen. Time and time again. Amen. Hit me here. You think it's bad? Amen. Hail and fire mingled with blood. One third of the sea becomes blood. One third of all the fish in the sea died. Amen. One third of all the ships are destroyed. Amen. One third of the rivers and the fountains of water. Amen. Are polluted. Many men are dying. Come on. Are y'all still with me? But it's not over by any means. Amen. The fourth. Come on here. In verse 12. Amen. If I want to say something here. If you intend to defy God and rule his son Jesus Christ out of your life. Amen. It's only fair that I tell you what you've got to look forward to. Amen. This earth is destined. Amen. What you can expect is God's judgment. The Bible said in this fourth angel, the third part of the sun was smitten, and third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as a third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and no light, no moon, no stars, the constellations, and the night for a third part of it. Hey Amen. I want to tell you, hey Amen. When a third part of light is withdrawn, how's it going to affect the agriculture? Amen. God have mercy. Isaiah deals with this. Amen. In the 13th chapter of his prophecy. Amen. Verse 10 he said, For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Amen. I want to tell you, I wish I could get people able to understand, hey man, things are not going to get better, they're going to get worse, and men's going to get worse in their wickedness and their evil, pernicious ways, hey man, because their hearts are evil. Do you believe that? Say amen. 
It ain't over yet. Here comes a fifth round of judgments. Unloosens the underworld of damned spirits. The Bible said a key is given for the bottomless pit. These demons are commanded, get this, that they should not hurt the grass that's left. And they should not hurt the green things that are left. Neither any tree that is left. But only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Who are these that's going to have the seal of God in the foreheads? 144,000. Amen. They are sealed by God. Amen. Come on, y'all still with me. I want to tell you. Amen. I'm, I intend to be out of this world. Amen. I'm going to down the place that's called heaven where streets of gold and gates of pearl. Amen. And river of life and the trees of life. Amen. Help me here. Amen. I wish you could get a, understood in your mind tonight. Amen. That these demons are commanded that they should not hurt the grass that's left, neither the green things nor the trees, but only hurt those men who have not the seed of God in their foreheads. Now get this. This invasion of demonic powers is limited to five months. They do not kill men. They only torment men. Amen. They've got intelligence because they know whom to torment and whom to leave alone. They obey a ruler of darkness and his name is given. Amen. The name that is given to him. Amen. It means the destroyer. I want to tell you. Amen. The hallucinations of hell will be worse than any narcotic or alcoholic or insane criminal has ever known or thought about. Amen. These serial killers that do the atrocities of life. Amen. That is so demonic that we wonder how they can ever think of anything. Amen. But I want to tell you, this world as we know it now is going to be a paradise in compared to what it's going to be like after the the rapture of the church and the saints of God are gone out of here. Amen. Tribulation such as the world has never known. Amen. Is going to come upon this world. Amen. These demons, they'll bite and they'll sting and they'll torment men for five months. Amen. Could I say it like this and you not take it in a bad way? But they share hell with the living. Amen. That are still living and them that are living are going to think they're in hell. Amen. The relentless suffering and the sense of capture. Amen. From these demonic powers that have come to torment men for five months. Amen. I want to tell you there's no cure. Come on, are y'all still with me? There's no antibiotic that can ease the pain. There's no painkillers that will eradicate the trouble. Amen. And the suffering that you're going through. Amen. If you're still here after the rapture of the church and the, come on, y'all still in me, and the devil has his way in this world. Amen. I want to tell you, God's sake, saints of God, be sure everything's right between you and God. Amen. And don't let anything hinder you, amen, from being right with God. We visited a man this week. Amen. I don't know if he's ever been to church. He might have. Amen. Amen. And uh, I don't know, probably in a dying condition, really. But I want to tell you. We ask him if he's made peace with God, and he said yes. And that's all we have to go on. We have to leave that with him and God. Are y'all still with me? But I meet people every day who tell me, in plain English, I pray every day, but they never change their way of living. They're never, t- are y'all still with me now? They still go to their wild parties. Amen. They still drink their liquor. 
they still drink their alcohol. Amen. Am I doing all right now? Amen. They still curse and take God's name in vain occasionally. Amen. They have not changed any facet of their life. They still go to the places of the world. Amen. Come on here. When the Bible said, Come out from among them, be ye separate, thus saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Their dress has not changed. Their appearance has not changed. Amen. Their personalities have not changed. Their motives have not changed. And yet they will tell you in no uncertain terms, I pray every day. Amen. Your praying does no good unless you're willing to repent. Come on here and change your method of living. These demonic powers, demonic spirits bite and sting men. Here we come. Another round of misery. Awaits an impudent, Christ rejecting human race. It's a strange setting. The Euphrates River, where Satan's seduction originally started. 200 million spirit Calvary emerged from hell. They are given 391 days to kill. And a third part of men. Amen. The birth, I thought, when I read these verses, I thought these birth control idiots. Amen. They need to worry about overpopulation and birth explosion. Amen. Help me here. Amen. Not when you read this eighth and ninth chapters of Revelation. A third part of men is going to be slain. I don't know exactly what the population of, a, of this planet right now is. It's something over six billion. Amen. I don't know exactly. I did know it one time. But population is amen, expanding daily. Amen. Over six billion. If a third part, because I understand, y'all get this. Amen. There'll be a great many of us leave out of here when the rapture takes place. Amen. But remember this, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter in, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. But for the sake, amen, of understanding and get a grasp on this as best we can. Amen. These two hundred million demons that are let loose. Amen. They kill one third of men. Amen. Or mankind. That means if there's over over six billion people in the world just for the sake of Amen getting a grasp on it. Two billion. Amen. Mankind is gonna die. Amen. From these demon spirits. Listen to me. Amen. They'll have 391 days. Amen. To slaughter men. Ah. Amen. This is a spirit enemy, if you will. A spirit army. Amen. They cannot be repulsed by mankind's sophisticated weapons. The tank, the guided, the guided missiles. The nuclear warhead. Amen. Our bombing capabilities. Amen. Chemical combat cannot roll back this cavalry from hell. Amen. There is no civilian defense stout enough to bar their entrance into this world. Amen. There is no, there is, there is no national boundary. Amen. That is sacred from these demonic powers and spirit. There's no Pentagon able enough to devise wars. Amen. And plan victory over these 200 million demons. There's no politician clever enough to bargain with this enemy. Amen. 200 million demonic powers and spirits that has come to destroy a third part of the population of man. Somebody say amen. I want to tell you, amen, you cannot destroy, amen, a demonic spirit, but they can destroy you. 
John saw them marshaled. Amen. They were ready when God opens the gate. Amen. In chapter 9, verse 16, and the number of the army, army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. That is 200 million. And I saw and heard the number of them. 200 million phantom riders. Amen. From hell loosed upon this planet. Amen. Come on here. Amen. Ah, hail and fire mingle with blood's not enough. Amen. A third of the sea become blood's not enough. A third of the fish in the sea die is not enough. A third of the ships destroyed is not enough. Amen. Wormwood. Amen. That's going to pollute a third of the rivers and fountains and many men die is not enough. Amen. The sun's going to be a third of it's going to be darkened and the sun a third of the moon and a third of the constellations of the heavens is going to be darkened. Amen. Come on. Are y'all still with me? And these demonic spirits, uh, amen, that are turned loose upon this earth, amen, to torment men for five months, uh, amen, that's not enough to satisfy the judgment of God, amen, he's going to send 200 million demonic spirits, uh, amen, to slay men because of their wickedness uh, and their rebellion against God, uh, amen, and two, approximately some we're near or nine to two billion mankind's gonna die. Hey man, help me here. Are y'all stay with me. Hey man, the number, hey man, of these demonic powers, John heard, hey man, the number of them, two hundred thousand thousand. Hey man, these phantom riders from hell is gonna be unleashed upon our planet. I want to tell you, you must be powerfully in love. Amen with this world system. Amen with passion to take a chance like that. You want to stay here and go through all that? Amen that's coming upon the world. When you could live good, you could live right, you could live holiness and go to heaven when you die. Amen, but you'd rather do your own thing. You'd rather live your own life. You'd rather dress your own way. You'd rather indulge in your own pleasures and wind up still here when the trumpet sounds and the dead in Christ is going to rise first and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. You are a fool that wants to stay here and go through all of that. I don't understand man's thinking. Men would rather die than yield to God. Somebody said, Brother Savage, when tr- judgment comes, don't you think men will think about God and repent? Amen. I see this rebellion every day that I live on this world. Men that rather serve the devil and the flesh and pleasures. Amen. Then to enjoy the glories of heaven. John himself faces the dismal, discouraging fact. Amen. I want you to get this. This is what John said. And the death and the rest which were not killed yet repented not of the works of their hands and they should not worship devils amen should not uh, worship idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood neither which can neither see nor hear nor walk amen the bible said in revelation 9 20 and 21 amen neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorcerers, or their drugs, nor of their fornication, or, amen, or sex sins, nor of their thefts. Amen. Hell can
can only produce hell. And when you reject God, amen, there's nothing else left but the judgment of God to come upon this world. Amen. And God will turn you over to a reprobate man to believe a lie and be damned. Amen. Because you will not accept the truth. Some, come on here, some want to accept partial truth, but they don't want the whole truth. Amen. Come on here. Somebody said, I, hey man, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. The devil does too. The devil knows and trembles, but he doesn't change. And people now believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that they don't change their way of living. They don't come over here. They still live the same old life and run with the same old crowd, and they're going to enjoy, hey man, the destruction of this world. After a while. I don't have time to go to chapter 16 of Revelation. It gives a detailed description of this final round of judgment. Amen. This first verse of chapter 16. It's all there. An awesome, awful detail. It's in your Bible. Yeah, you hear me? It's in your Bible that you never open at home. Woo! Help me here. It's in your Bible that you only carry to church when you go, but never open its pages to read. Am I preaching all right this morning? I want to tell you this. This is a wicked earth and world that we're living in now. I never ever dreamed. I want to tell you, God's posted warnings after warnings after warnings. And preacher after preacher after preacher. Amen. Has stood and warned us of things that's going to come on this world. And it goes in one ear and out the other. And when we get home, amen, come on here. You still put on your worldly attire. Help me never change your speech or the crowd that you run with. Because you're only interested in the satisfaction of the flesh. What fascination and moral rot and material gain in violence and narcotic slavery and sex transgressions and organized crime can compel men to choose hell instead of heaven. It doesn't even sound Reasonable. I dare you. I challenge you to go home today and this afternoon and read this eighth chapter and the sixteenth chapter and the ninth chapter and see what's coming upon this earth. And the best thing you can say, dear God, I don't want to live here. I don't want to be here. But you'll have to change. You'll have to make a change. Amen. I'm amazed at this. The hold that sin has on people's lives. I'm amazed. They seem like they don't want to be broken. They don't want that hold to be broken. They don't want that pleasure to be stopped. They indulge too much. Am I preaching all right this morning? They enjoy the pleasures of this world. But I can promise you, it's only for a season. It's coming to an end. And it's coming very fast. Of all that's going on in America right now. Amen. And the rebellion against God in America. We don't have to go to Russia. We don't have to go to China. Amen. America has rebelled.
revolt against Christianity and against God and against holiness. Come on here. Hey man, what used to be the norm in morality now has become the exception. Hey man, and we are the oddballs in society. Hey man, how come? Because men's hearts are on evil continually. The hold that sin has. I want to tell you the only, the only solution, the only hope, the only antidote is the blood of Jesus. Somebody said, I want to do better. Well, do it. Quit talking about it. Do it. Am I doing all right here? You can talk your way right into hell. And there'll be a lot of people that sit on the church pews that heard me preach. Come on here. And heard preaching like this for years. And you know what heaven requires. Amen. Come on here. Follow peace with all men in holiness, which without no man shall see the Lord. And, and people sit on these church pews and know, amen, what's right. And they're still determined to go to hell. They really believe what I'm preaching is right. But they have a sin and the pleasures of this world has such a hold. They don't want it broken. They're having too much fun and pleasure. Jesus Christ can, is the only one that can mass, smash the power of of the pleasures of this world and set the sinner free set the prisoner free now I do want to tell you this morning I'm closing come with a song amen the blood still works the blood of Jesus still cleanses I was talking to someone recently and I quoted the verse, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. And this individual said to me, I don't know that I want to be separated from all of it. I want to tell you, it don't take but one little sin like that to damn your soul in hell. The blood still cleanses, sanctifies. Amen. I hear, I hear a songwriter pick up a pen. Rock of ages, cliff for me. Let me hide myself in thee. One of this morning. If there's even one spark or speck, amen, of question mark about something in your life that you know you shouldn't do, that's enough to keep you in this world when the rapture takes place. Brother Savage, oh, Brother Savage. You're preaching it awful straight this morning. I understand that. But this generation has got to wake up. And unless revival takes place in our wholeness churches, and men change their motives and desires, hell's going to be populated with church people that didn't want to change everything about their life. Father, I thank you this morning for your mercy, for your grace, for your love. I pray, oh God, I pray, oh God, this morning, strange as it seems to human nature, 
that life is so short and eternity is so long and that heaven requires a total surrender and commitment. I pray, oh God, that you walk the aisles of this sanctuary this morning. Somehow or another, Lord, would you reach where I've been unable to reach? Would you touch some heart and soul this morning? Oh God. Oh God, help us to understand that heaven is high and holy and hell is far below and hot. That people must make their choices at the altar. For Jesus' sake, I pray. Amen. Everybody stand. I've done my best to preach to you from my heart today. Sin is a destroyer. And it'll destroy souls in hell. Pleasures of this sin, pleasures of this world, is a destroyer. I wonder if there's any here this morning. Amen. I don't care who you are. I don't care how long you've been in church or around church. But if you feel like you need for the Holy Ghost to do it, a fresh work of the Spirit in your heart. Change more than what you have now. Change. A total surrender and commitment of everything. Does anybody want to come pray? Anybody want to come pray? Saint, sinner, cold and indifferent, backslider, Amen. You want to come pray?